is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is The Chris Abraham Show, Season 4, Episode 14. This one is called Even Free College and Free University and Free Graduate School and Free Doctorate and Free Postdoc and Free Student Forever in Europe isn't free. And I don't think people understand what the extreme... anti like equity anti freedom anti uh, equality I don't know morality of Europe I don't think people see that well enough they see they see intellectuals they see people who immigrate here from Europe they see uh, the creme de la creme on television and they say my university, my entire college experience and high school experience with some of the best quality education in the entire world was free, paid for by the state. But what they don't see is they don't see how hard it is or how easy it is to uh, not be tracked to the free university that you so desperately want to do and how our extremely expensive expensive uh, point of sale university system is so much more equitable except it costs eighty thousand dollars a year so fifty to eighty thousand dollars a year same thing with uh, with private academies etc 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 you can always get the best education even if you're a C student if you can pay full price and don't necessarily need to go to Harvard or Yale or Princeton um, in America that's in many ways why people from Japan and people from China and people from Europe come here for their undergraduate education it's because they were fenced out because they didn't make the meritocracy uh, they didn't make the they didn't make the mark of the meritocracy at fourth grade or third grade or second grade or first grade or eighth grade or tenth grade or whatnot. Even my favorite little university system in Rue Britannia in Great Britain, there's an extreme amount of meritocracy restrictions from, and I'm going to show my age here because I don't think it's O levels and A levels anymore, but um, even in uh, well, let's talk about that after the break. Welcome back to Season 4, Episode 14 of the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham. And I gotta tell you, like, I know it's so awesome, and I totally agree. I totally agree that university in America should be high quality and free for all. It should not discourage a five or six year uh, graduate time frame. It should not gut you and create a huge amount of debt on, on your behalf. And I also encourage that the free university system should be uh, extremely blind 
as to what you want to study because I believe that a degree in, uh, in Greek, uh, in ancient Greek studies or classical Latin or whatnot should be as, as um, accessible and as respected as should uh, in a degree in engineering or a degree in accountancy or business. But let me give you the rub. Let me give you the rub. All right. So, I hate to admit it, but European, in the same way that the barrier to entry in America to education is the price tag, and that is the way they desperately want to keep people out, except for those people who have enough heart or desire to get in a, uh, a degree in, in literature or whatever. Like you have to either know, in America, you either have to know that you can over earn or you can uh, have multi-generational wealth, in which case you can pay the full price or you have enough heart to incur the debt and to know that you still have the, you know, the desire in your heart to passionately follow the degree in science or literature or philosophy or poetry or history or art or art history or all these other degrees that my conservative friends think are garbage you um creative writing etc you have to have the heart to enter into this knowing that you will be saddled for debt and you will be saddled with debt forever um I think that uh, it's the same similar thing to uh, I don't know if it's popular anymore but it has to do with the it has to do with the same exact thing that the internship programs are all about let's say uh, internship on the hill this is like a trope it's so well known which is you either have to be so rich or so passionate that you're willing to work for nothing for any number of years in order to become, in order to build your foundation for your career in politics. Um, if you are not, if you don't have the heart to live in a house with 12 other people and um, get your only calories from, uh, from happy hours and, um, and uh, Capitol Hill events, free events, where you can get, you know, hors d'oeuvres and other types of food that you can stuff your, your pockets with. Or if you are the scion of wealth, or even if you have parents who make three or $400,000 a year, can spot you for a number of years until you've made your footing and filled your Rolodex contactless, then you are banished. And it's a, it's a choice. You can either have the heart to incur that debt or you have to have the funding to not have to incur any debt. But to, you know, if you're wealthy, you are a value add to the person who hires you. If you can help them through your contacts, uh, if, you can, if you can help your boss by being a scion of privilege, wealth, and success, or if you can basically be subsidized by your rich family by, you know, charging only $23,000 a year instead of $83,000 a year. If you can give your, um, if you can negotiate with your boss starting out with a low salary, but a high, uh, a high, um, I don't know, position title, then it's win-win-win, but if you have nothing to negotiate with, if you're not willing to do work for free or for cheap <clears throat> in order to get your career going, uh, then you've got to find something else to, to happen. You need to do something else. Uh, most of the time, the expense of doing an internship, a free internship, a low-paying internship, an internship into an expensive city is the best way of separating chaff from wheat. You know, if someone's willing to go ahead and live a, in a house filled with uh, other impoverished but passionate people, then uh, you know for a fact that they're pre-selected, they're preordained. They either have the uh, 
they either have the family wealth to allow them to do it or they have the uh, desire, the fire in their loin. This uh, is similar but completely different from the system that, that there is in Europe. And in Europe, let's use Germany for example, when I lived in Berlin I was amazed by the passion of my friend Frank who, you know, is a Berliner, uh, grew up as a Luxembourgian, lives in Berlin, has uh, two kids, and those kids, those kids were not, uh, n they were not testing well. They were not, uh, at fourth grade, they were not going to make the cut towards being uh, academic merit. They were not tracking to uh, the academy they were tracking to vocational and so he th threw himself at the private private schools in Berlin and took a job as a as a music teacher at a uh, at a school that would um, fast track his kids into an academic um, an academic uh, vector instead of a vocational vector he hacked the system, but he was able to get his kids into it. But if you're just a normal person, you either have to, like to use the French as an example, you are either of a bureaucratic class, and there are bureaucratic preschools and bureaucratic uh, K through 12 and bureaucratic colleges and bureaucratic universities and so forth, where you will be tracked based on multi-generational uh, being a technocrat um, in the French in the French bureaucratic system and you your name alone and your history alone will get you into the most beautiful cushy of academic and technocratic and bureaucratic and um, government positions otherwise you every system is going to pluck people with, uh, with 130 plus IQ and make sure that they find their way to academia. I mean, I have, I have a, an IQ in the 130s and I didn't get a sweet ride. I wasn't a national merit scholar, but I got plenty of grants and I got plenty of scholarships in order to, to take the edge off. And I also must say that my pop-pop was a wealthy enough man that he made sure that I could go wherever I wanted. So even though I incurred some debt, I didn't incur nearly as much debt as a 20000 at the time dollar GW degree, $20,000 a year degree uh, should have caught me. So with that, with that um, revealed, I didn't uh, do a lot of suffering, but you know my buddy Mark, who's got a, um, a national, who is a national merit scholar, uh, was plucked by GW and got a full ride, um, and incurred no debt, and in fact had a uh, had um, his entire community. Uh, not only was he, you know, but his entire community uh, under under wrote his degree at GW, and in fact reward him enough that he had spending money, he had pocket money um, in addition to uh, you know, having his uh, academic work paid for and let's say you are, you know, Mark is uh, approaching a genius IQ but imagine that you have, that you are valedictorian and that you are uh, quite quite uh, um, you know Anybody who can uh, 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 anybody who can be tapped for a Rhodes Scholarship or a Genius Grant, you know, is going to be plucked out and, and will never incur any debt. In fact, you know, the Genius Grant I believe gives you hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't know. Um, and so, like, the only reason you are incurring. A lot of debt to get your degree in, in theater is because you are not worthy of going to American University for free. If you have incurred hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, it's because you are trying to 
pass as a gifted person. You probably have B's and C's. You probably uh, do not have uh, 1600 SAT. You probably are um, above average in your LSAT, above average in your uh, GMAT, above average in your SAT. Um, and you, through force of will and through incurring debt, you achieved a level of accomplishment and uh, incurred the debt, but you got your master's degree, you've got your PhD, you've got your, um, your amazing uh, deg masters in, in, in writing from Iowa or whatever. But, you know, you are going to, there are cost centers and there are, uh, there are income centers. And in order for people to attract the um, creme de la creme of the academic world to the university, they need to get a bunch of people who are just happy to be there and willing to pay full price. And that's you if you incurred hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of debt. Because honestly, if you are creme de la creme, the university is throwing money at you. Um, but there's the benefit. America allows C students, B students and C students, to be able to um, uh, rub shoulders and rub elbows with the creme de la creme and quite possibly... Uh, put on their resume that they went to the same schools as David Foster Wallace or whomever um, to have gone to the same schools as Carl Sagan or um, or uh, Justice so and so and so as a result it, it is worth the extreme amount of vig in order to be associated with people who are actually 20 IQ points stronger than you but have received the same degree and to be honest um, if you went to Princeton or Harvard or Yale or Duke or Brown or Cornell, and at that point nobody's going to um, care about magna cum laude or cum laude. They're just going to care that you have a degree from Oxbridge. Now, when we move over to Great Britain, which I'm more, most familiar with, people do care about what your degree is. They care a lot about what your degree is, no matter what university you attended. They care that you, um, they care about what, uh, what you did in your A-levels. They care about um, what you did in your O-levels. And the highest degree you can get is a first, or an A, I guess, in O-levels. But I think it's still has to do with first um, um, maybe it's like two one two two like uh, the way it works is interesting but if if you get a first you um, I don't even know if there's first with honors but if you get um, your O levels with various and sundry degrees like you do history and literature and maths and physics or whatever and if you get first in those you have any you you have your pathway to oxbridge which is the swanky way of saying you have your access to oxford or cambridge and you're going to go there for free but to get a first or to get multiple firsts like in order to get in oxford or cambridge you either need to study abroad and attend there or you need to get two or three or four firsts. It's like, you know, it's like not good enough to just get a 4.0 anymore and plus a 1600 to get into Harvard or Yale. You need to get uh, any number of AP courses. You need to get 4.4. .4. You need to get a 5.0 out of 4. You need to, you know, overshoot in order to distinguish yourself as um, as someone worthy of a spot at the university but if you can achieve that level you're not gonna have to pay um, 
you can go to Polytechnic with a lower degree. You can go to a second tier school with a little bit of a lower, um, you know, one first and a couple two ones, et cetera, for free. You can, you, you know, there are uh, three tiers, right? There are, uh, there's Oxbridge and then, you know, I think maybe my University of East Anglia was second tier or third tier. Uh, there's, you know, all types of tiers of universities, um, and they're all free, but they're all meritocracy based. Um, they've made a point of trying to make it less elitist and class based. Uh, so there are a lot of people who are, you know, middle class or blue collar or, or poor and impoverished and so forth. And they are pulled out of the muck, but they're not pulled out of the muck just because of equity. Those people still need to score exceptional degrees and exceptional um, scores. They just aren't from generational wealth or they're not from generational family lines. Um, it's not just from the blue blood, it's from the blue class as well. But in the same way that France and Germany and even Japan and so forth, like you need to you need to kill or be killed in order to get enough um, merit through uh, through the uh, colleges that you attended, through the degrees that you took, through the scores that you made, and to the point where in China and Japan that if you don't make the mark, people commit suicide over it because there's just no ability to access unless you have enough money to be able to go into the free market of universities around the world that are more than willing to take your money uh, for that hallowed degree that allows people to afford to pay to under under um to to underwrite uh the degrees of people who live there for example when i lived in, in university of east anglia i was a study abroad student when I tried to get into the university on merit because I fell in love with the girl, they were like, sorry, not going to happen. So they allowed me sluttily into their alma mater system because my full price American study abroad program and the, you know, thousand uh, Chinese students were paying full price. And that was uh, aiding into the uh, eroding uh, tax base that would allow people who were British nationals to achieve the level of achieving a free uh, university degree on the on the shoulders of um, rich Americans and rich uh, international students who would never be under uh, under would never be underwritten. They would exclusively be uh, full price uh, participants. And we, in the same way that you people who get uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt, you, your debt funds the uh, experience of, of genius and uh, academically blessed students who go to those universities you paid extreme amounts of money for for free. Uh, you underwrite their undergrad, you underwrite their summers, you underwrite their uh, years abroad, you underwrite their um, graduate programs, you underwrite their um, PhD programs, you underwrite their postdocs, and you underwrite a lot of their ability to uh, to become the next generation in in academia. So it's exactly the same program. Um, you would be amazed for people who have 140, 150, 160 IQ, if that's even possible. You'd be surprised that how how red carpeted is the life of a, an academically gifted, uh, talented student in America today. They are invited to university in Berlin and in, and, and, um, in Great Britain. They are invited on Rhodes scholarships. They're invited uh, to academic programs in Australia 
and in, in uh, Austria and Switzerland and New Zealand, um, once you can show that you are in fact uh, extremely talented and gifted, uh, there, is a, there is a race to bring you on board. If nothing else, uh, here's, a, here's a quick story about how I became a Phi Kappa Psi DC Alpha um, brother at GW. Like, I don't consider myself a extremely academically gifted person. Like I said, my uh, IQ is in the 130s, strong 130s. Um, but, you know, I have aphantasia and S S dam and I have um, ADHD and, like, um, I never really caught into doing math in my head. Like, if you give me a math problem, I'm all fingers and toes. Like, I'm, I'm nobody. Uh, but I did pretty well in college, and I was uh, an athlete in the crew team. And so I was extremely prestigious when it came to the uh, fraternity, which was, you know, not a full fraternity, but was a... Uh, uh, was trying to become uh, a national fraternity. We were, uh, what's the term for it? I, I don't remember. But they realized that I was such a valuable asset in terms of GPA and being, you know, doing things outside of just being a frat boy that my fraternity very literally did not impede on my studies or upon my athleticism they totally worked around my my 5 30 in the morning wake-ups and my study and all those other things because they knew that i was a, i was a uh, um a diamond in their crown and they couldn't mess that up i i raised the um i raised the average sat score of the fraternity and i raised the average uh, GPA of the fraternity and and these are the kind of things universities will throw money at someone who increases their uh, their prestige who you know when you go to US News and World Report uh, about colleges they show what the average SAT score is and so if we consider DC Alpha Phi Kappa Psi to be a microcosm of a university I was bragging rights for the fraternity and they didn't want to mess with that. They didn't wake me up at the middle of the night to do middle of the night. There was no hazing. There was no, I mean, I had to memorize the Greek alphabet, but aside, and, and some of the fighting songs and songs for Phi Kappa Psi, but I was barely, it was barely an inconvenience. Uh, and I enjoyed it, but they needed me in order to buoy up in order to lift all boats and if you are that kind of trade to use you know sports terms right there's that there are those goats there are those um, uh, greatest of all times those there are those people that you need to have uh, on your team your Brady's etc in order to allow the team to be considered great, in order to draw people to uh, see your team. You know, you can play money ball all you want. You can have all the best uh, students in the school, but if you don't have a few high performers, you're not a prestigious university. You're not a prestigious uh, sports team. You're not a prestigious fraternity. You are just, you are just above average. You are just average. And so people fight over those people, whether it be the meritocracy world of the university system that is considered free but really limits people based on their academic prowess, or whether it's the U.S. system where university is free unless you're stupid. If you're stupid, you have to pay full price. If you're foreign, you have to pay full price. Um, that's it. That's my rant for today. Sorry, and I know it's boring, but I need to get out of my system. Free is always free unless it's not free, right? Um, if you're on the VIP list at a party, no, at a club, if you're on the VIP list, uh, you go in, they lift the red, uh, red, um, 
the red rope and you drink for free and you go into the VIP room. Otherwise, you're paying, I mean, my in my day, it was a $20 cover. But you can say, I was in the Viper room uh, when whomever uh, was, you know, was, was there. You didn't have the VIP room treatment. You weren't uh, chugging top, you know, vodka out of... Uh, out of chilled containers along with your brute French champagne in the VIP room getting swag bags you were in the dirty you know admit it to yourself were you the were you the uh, the unwashed masses at your university at your prestigious university under the weight of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of premiums put on your ability to be associated with uh, with there being 25 active uh, professors who have um, who have uh, uh, awards, you know, who are um, recipients of genius grants and um, various and sundry, uh, uh, you know, just you know what I'm saying. At this point in the conversation, you realize that I don't have very much academic gift either, but I know that there are people who are the aphids and there are people who are the, they're the people who the system extracts uh, sugar water from, and there are people that the extracted sugar water is fed to. And my buddy Mark received the aphid uh, sugar water I am somewhere in between and then there are loads of people who just get in because they are willing to pay full price for the opportunity to have gone there and that is a an unfair but a fair trade you pay so much money that I will let you into a place that you don't deserve to be and there's plenty of that going on it's the American way and apparently it's every prestigious university they just don't call them the dumb kids they call them the uh, furners who are willing to spend full price to have an Oxford experience or how to to have an, an Ox uh, a Harvard Yale Princeton experience a GW experience etc mind you generally if they're Chinese or Asian or whatever generally the people who go to um, who go to years abroad or go to foreign students in university are also extremely wealthy too so it doesn't hurt um, amen anyway I will come back with how you can contact me and talk to you soon I hope this is still recording yep <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, formerly Chris Cast, Season 4, Episode 14. And this is how you contact me. I'm chris at abraham.su. I am chrisabraham.com. I am twitter.com slash chrisabraham. I am instagram.com slash chris slash Chris Abraham. I am anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. I am I am facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. I'm your mama.com slash Chris Abraham. Um, you can reach me at plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one and you can call me or text me although it's pretty rare you'll get me because I don't answer calls that I don't have scheduled or don't know. You can reach me via WhatsApp. You can reach me via Signal and um, Telegram. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, please follow, subscribe, rate, click the bell. I'm at YouTube, youtube.com slash Chris Abraham. I upload my all my shows to there too. And... Uh, merci bien, merci beaucoup, muchas, muchas, muchas gracias, uh, prego, prego, gracias, gracias, 
and uh, Auf Wiedersehen, Arrivederci, à tout à l'heure, à demain, hasta mañana, hasta luego, mahalo, aloha, and I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.